Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from David Vandenson, who is AB9PM. And he has a problem with um, a varying SWR on 80 meters. This is what he first said. I've been using an off-center fed dipole for several years, okay? And I've been using a feed point about 29.8%. It's kind of hard to measure. Let's just say 30%. Uh, tunes 80 through 10 with 30 meters being the highest SWR, which is kind of what you would expect. 30 meters is not a nice relationship to 80 meters. I like to run some power on digital bands. Um, I would encourage you to lower that power because what you are doing is there are a lot more people hearing you, which meaning that you're contributing to the crowding of the bands. Usually FT8 and things like that are considered to be low power bands, 25, 30 watts, something like that. Now, I will admit that I've run it up to maybe 50 or 100 watts even, if there's somebody I'm trying to get and they're not hearing me. But I realize that my signals go out over the whole world when really I'm trying to get, you know, a microwatt over here or something like that. But um, it, it, it happens. I like to run some power on digital bands, 200 watts and on 80 meters. I keep running into the same problem of rising SWR in the digital bands on 80 meters. Okay, the SWR at this area of the band is 1.5 to 1. Do you have any idea how to fix this? I also have a line isolator at my station end. I'm not sure you need the line isolator. Uh, if the line is uh, properly grounded at a lightning arrestor um, because the ballon at the uh, feed point of the antenna actually acts as uh, your line isolator for that. Uh, so you're putting in an extra ballon in there that's not really adding anything now, before we jump into really exploring the uh, list of questions that uh, we have in front of us, I want to pay a special thank you to Doug Dry. Uh, Doug is one of my most recent patrons who has joined up to help support this channel. You, too, can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and pick something that works for you. So... Let's jump in. Now, the reason that the SWR is changing is because the uh, core, the toroid, uh, at the center of the ballon is heating up. And as it heats up, its magnetic properties, its permeability and permittivity and all of that sort of thing are changing as the thing gets hot. And then it will go back as the thing cools down. Now, the problem is on digital modes that uh, you, um, you have a 1.5 to 1 SWR. And so you've got about, what, a third of the power. I'd have to work out the numbers. A bunch of the power comes back through the ballon and down the line. So the ballon is handling power going both ways. And the, you're getting some heating in there. And there's enough heating to cause the um, magnetic parameters of that, that uh, toroid to change. The solution is to run lower power, okay? Keep the power down to the point where the SWR doesn't change on you, okay? Um, so, yeah, now there are other things that you can do. You can rewind the ballon. And instead of one core, put two or even three. Now that puts more magnetic material in there that will dissipate the heat better because you'll get less heating in each of those cores. Uh, 
Now, the normal 49 to 1 ballon, and you've got probably a 4 to 1 ballon in there, and it's probably a current ballon, which means it's actually two coils, and then prior to that, there's a 1 to 1 coil to convert from uh, unbalanced to balanced, which then goes into the uh, current ballon, which is actually a current bal bal because it's uh, balanced in, balanced out, okay, and the current is kept the same on the outsides. Now, um, and you can rewind them and make them work, um, and people do do that, okay. Um, why does it overheat? Okay, in every magnetic medium, there are eddy currents. Every time you have an electron goes straight, it starts to bend around the magnetic field lines in a little spiral. And these things can start interacting with each other. And if you used a solid iron core for your ballon, the core would immediately absorb all the energy in there. So what they do is powder the magnetic material powdered iron or powdered something, and they put that in there with the glue, and they connect all that together to greatly reduce but not entirely eliminate the heating caused by the eddy currents. If you pass enough magnetic flux through that coil, you can do one of two things. Heat it or cause the coil to saturate magnetically. Real coils get to a point where they can't handle more Henry's of inductance, inductive reactance. They saturate. It's not a problem we have with capacitors, but it is a problem we have with inductors. And if they saturate, your SWR is immediately going to go way wacko. Okay, you fix that by backing off on the power to where they don't saturate, and it should go immediately back to where it was before. If, however, you heat the coils, they have to cool down in order for it to go back. So, wanting to run a lot of power on an off-center fed dipole, you need to make sure you get an off-center fed dipole that is actually rated for that power. Now, uh, one of the other things he asks in here is how many windings should there be? Now, I know the ARRL coil uh, or uh, ballon for their uh, 40 through 10 NFED half wave has two turns for the primary. The secondary has 14. So you've got a 2 to 14 or 1 to 7. Uh, ratio, which is 1 to 49, which is what you want for impedance because you square the number of turns on each side. Now, the thing that you could, if you are going to rewind this ballon, put three turns, okay? And then you'd have to have a total of 21 turns because it's got to be seven times the number of turns. Now, here's the deal. The reason aircraft run 400 hertz throughout the aircraft is because the transformers for 400 hertz are tremendously smaller than transformers for 60 hertz, which are even smaller than transformers for 50 hertz. Because the higher you go in frequency, the more, you know, the fewer turns you need to get that energy and get that transformer working right. If you try to three turn primary at audio frequencies, you'd get basically nothing out. It, it's, so the number of turns is related to the frequency. The, and this is one thing I worry about with the ARRL. Um, ballon being extended to 80 meters is whether we r might heat that ballon up. So I'm going to keep the power way down. Still got that antenna up. I've got a few more things I want to try on it.
before we take that down and put up the Wolf River coil antenna and do some more final tests on that. But the bottom line is, yes, you can do three, but then you need to do 21 of the uh, secondary. So my recommendation, drop the power on 80 meters to the level at which it will not cause the SWR to change, okay? That might be 50 watts, that might be 25, even though you can get 200 at 40 meters or something like that, okay? You've got to respect the material that is in that toroid. You're asking a lot of it. Now, if, the, if when you reduce power, the SWR goes back immediately to where it was, then that's because your higher power is saturating the magnet. If it takes a few hours to go back to where it was, like next day, then you're heating the coil causing the magnetic properties to change, which is heating it quite a bit. If you keep doing that, the coil, or uh, the core, the core, the core, will shatter. And it's a good thing it's in a box, because it can go off with a bang, okay, as you keep building up the heat in there. Remember, there's glue in there uh, that's holding that together, and glue is often flammable. So there you have it. It was a long explanation of what's going on. Um, I would just encourage you to drop the power on 80 meters, um, and then I think you'll have much better luck. So, there you have it. If uh, you would like to help support this channel, please go to uh, dcastler.com support. Please subscribe and like. And until we next meet, 73.